So the Hunter Biden scandal is now out in the open and the White House is really unhappy about it. So Karine Jean-Pierre was asked repeat, repeatedly over Hunter Biden's text message and uh, she gets very, very, very angry about it. Kirby wouldn't answer James's question though. Are you going to answer the question? It's not, not a reasonable question to ask whether the President of the United States was involved as this message seems to suggest in some sort of a coercive conversation for business dealing by a son. Is that something, if he wasn't, then maybe you should tell us. So that. here's the thing, I, and I appreciate the question. I believe my colleague uh, at the White House Council uh, has answered this question already, has dealt with this, has uh, uh, made it very clear. I just don't have anything to share outside of my, what my colleagues have shared. Uh, and so I would refer you to him and the, D and the DOJ. Just not going to comment from here. Text message I will. All, what I can tell you is, I know that my colleague has dealt with this. He he uh, addressed this though, at the White House Council. I just don't have anything else to share. I just I just answered the question. I just answered the question. Yes or no? Was the president involved in the shakedown attempt? Yes no, yes no, yes no, yes no, yes Stephen, Stephen, I just answered the question. I just said I just. This is. It's not up to you how I answer the question. Wow, wow. It's a very simple question, and she is avoiding it. She avoided it, by the way, for solidly four minutes. It wasn't just Corinne Jean-Pierre trying to avoid questions about Hunter Biden's amazingly dispositive texts. I mean, if those texts are um, are in any way legitimate, that means that not only is Joe Biden lying when he says he didn't know what was going on with business, he's lying now and he says they weren't in business together. In any case, James Rosen of Newsmax, recent guest on the program, he asked John Kirby of the National Security Spokesperson's Office about Hunter's text. And Kirby gets very, very upset. A July 2017 WhatsApp message sent by Hunter Biden to Henry Zhao, a Chinese Communist Party official, which stated in its entirety, and I quote, I am sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand, and now means tonight. And Z, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows and my ability to forever hold a grudge, that you will regret not following my direction. I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father, unquote. So just a couple of questions about this. First, does this not undermine uh, the president's claim during the 2020 campaign and the reaffirmations of that claim by his two press secretaries since then that he never once discussed his son's overseas business dealings with him? No, and I'm not going to comment further on this. We're good. We're good. I, I'm not. James, James, let me just, let me save you some, let me save, let me say, let me save you some breath. If you're going to ask about this, I am not address. I don't, I know you do more than I'd like you to have. I am not going to address this issue from this podium. I'm just not going to do it. He says there that he, uh, that James Rosen has uh, more breath than he would like him to have. So I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Exactly. Meanwhile, you're, you're apparently not even supposed to ask questions about Hunter Biden, given that Hunter Biden is a routine guest with the president all around the world. He's literally flying with him on a routine basis at this point. He showed up at a state dinner the other night with, with the Indian delegation. And a reporter asked about it, and Karine Jean-Pierre got very, very mad. The president invited his son Hunter to the state dinner last night. Um, I'm wondering if you could take us into the thinking and decision making of why uh, the president decided to invite I, his son. I'm just not going to get into family discussion, personal family discussion. As you know, Hunter is his son. I'm just not going to get well, into it. Let me ask you this. If, if Hunter Biden wasn't the president's son, would he have invited someone who had just reached a plea agreement with federal prosecutors well, two days earlier? Well, a couple of things. Again, that's his son. It's a, he's a family member. It is not uncommon for family members to attend uh, events at the White House. You could look at past presidents. I'm sure you have. So that is not uncommon. Uh, as it relates to anything uh, uh, related to, uh, to Hunter, I'm just not going to respond. This is gaslighting of the highest order. Okay, it is not natural for the president of the United States in the midst of suspicions of corruption to invite not only Hunter, but also his brother James, both of whom are involved in this shakedown routine with foreign sources pouring money into them because they are associated with Joe. It is not normal to have those people to the White House. I mean, Hunter, this week, pled guilty to misdemeanor charges and had to take a diversion program and a gun charge. And Joe's got him right there. So there are only a couple of things that could be going on there. One is Joe really does not care what you think. He does not care. He is willing to be as overt about all of this, as blatant as possible, because like most politicians, he's stupid enough to believe he'll never get caught. That's possibility number one. The other possibility, and again, these are not mutually exclusive, is that Joe is physically dependent on Hunter at this point, which may very well be the case. I mean, we know that just a few months ago, when Joe was in Ireland, 
This is back in May. Hunter was sleeping in a cot in Joe's room, which suggests that essentially Hunter is now responsible for his father's physical care. So you have a situation in which one of the most corrupt, disgusting people in American politics, Hunter Biden, is not only at his father's side, he's providing him direct physical care while there are corruption allegations that are brewing about Hunter and Joe. Is that a good thing? Over the weekend, it was the one-year anniversary of Roe versus Wade. There's still work to be done. Abortion is the leading cause of death among infants in the United States and across the globe. Sadly, with the abortion pill accounting for over 50% of all abortions, babies' lives are at a greater risk now than ever before. Thankfully, you and I can do something about it thanks to our new partners at Preborn's Network of Clinics. A lot of people think when Roe versus Wade happened, when it was overturned, and that meant that, that suddenly tons and tons of lives were being saved. And some lives were being saved, but many, many other lives were being lost. And Preborn is doing the hard work of convincing mom to make sure that she does the right thing with her baby. Preborn is the largest provider of free ultrasounds in the United States. They offer love, support, and compassion to hurting women, helping them make the right choice. By letting a mom see and hear her baby on ultrasound, the child's chance at life is doubled. Preborn clinics provide mom who chooses life with maternity and baby clothes, diapers, car seats, counseling, and much more. All of these services, up to two years of assistance, are provided free, which is an amazing way of encouraging moms to do the right thing. One ultrasound is just 28 bucks. A $140 donation gives five babies a chance at life. A $15,000 donation will cover the cost of an ultrasound machine and save countless babies' lives for years to come. All gifts are tax deductible. We are the answer to saving babies' lives. To donate, dial pound 250, say keyword baby. That's pound 250, baby. Or go to preborn.com slash Ben. That's preborn.com slash Ben. Okay, meanwhile, one of the things that is important for you to have as a responsible citizen is life insurance. It's just a thing that you must have if you're a responsible human being. Now, we have life insurance. I have life insurance. My wife has life insurance. My business partners have life insurance. But it can be really expensive to get a good life insurance policy. You need to be able to shop around. And that can take time. People used to do it through word of mouth. Don't do it that way anymore. Instead, head on over to Policy Genius. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies and find your lowest price. I tell you from personal experience, it's really a good and satisfying thing to check life insurance off that to-do list. You can do that by heading on over to use Policy Genius right now. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies starting at just 25 bucks per month for a million dollars in coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as we can avoid those unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius's licensed agents work for you, not the insurance companies, which means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can actually trust their guidance. There are no added fees. Your personal information remains private. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head over to policygenius.com slash Shapiro or click that link in the description. Get your free life insurance quotes. See how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash Shapiro. Again, policygenius.com slash Shapiro. Go check them out right now. It's amazing to watch the media immediately shift into defense mode here, by the way. Here, for example, is MSNBC legal analyst Barbara McQuaid dismissing this text as absolutely meaningless. Who cares? Barbara, the whistleblower testimony, though, is from two IRS agents who say that the DOJ and other government officials improperly interfered in their Hunter Biden investigation, uh, giving Hunter Biden preferential treatment. There's been a lot of pushback against that. It was a Trump appointee, a U.S. attorney was held over. It was kept outside of DOJ. But what do you think about that? And we have not verified it. It's based on a WhatsApp. We don't know the verification of that. We don't know whether Hunter was exaggerating when he talked to someone, if it was he, if it's authentic, when he said, my father's here with me. And it was when Joe Biden was not in office, in between vice presidency and the presidency. Yes, I, I, I read that statement and I find it to be awfully flimsy uh, on which to build any sort of an investigation. It just simply is some uh, sort of puffery by uh, Barbara- Hunter Biden. Okay, can, can we point out here that an entire Trump-Russia investigation was initiated on the basis of George Papadopoulos, a low-level Trump campaign official, saying a rumored thing to an Australian official abroad? An entire campaign, a four-year-long campaign to destroy Donald Trump and his presidency? That campaign was launched by a single stray comment from George Papadopoulos, not a text from Donald Trump Jr., not a text from Donald Trump Jr. mentioning his father and corruption? I mean, if you're talking about the pretext for an investigation, this is not flimsy in the way that, say, the Steele dossier was flimsy. It's a direct text from Hunter Biden implicating his father in corruption. I don't know how else to put it. That's what this is. And yet they're out in force defending it. It's amazing. Nick Kristoff has an entire piece of the New York Times titled The Real Lesson from the Hunter Biden Saga. What do you think the real lesson is? I would think the real lesson is don't let your son trot around the earth as a as a kept boy, essentially, picking up bags of cash from some of the most nefarious people on the planet while you are still politically involved. Don't do that. That would be the good lesson here. But that's actually not the lesson Nick Kristoff is going to put forward. The lesson he's going to put forward is that Joe Biden is an amazing person. He says, well, the federal investigation appears to be ongoing. For now, I see no clear evidence of wrongdoing by President Biden himself. 
But the president does offer the country a fine model of the love and support that people with addictions need. Oh, Joe, oh, just can you see the amazing thing here? I mean, sure, weird amounts of money were making their way into the pockets of the entire Biden family, including Joe, like unexplained sums of cash. But the real thing here is that Joe just, he demonstrates love for Hunter. He loves Hunter so much. By the way, Hunter's illegitimate child, he doesn't love so much. Hunter actually cut a deal with the, with the stripper that he impregnated with his illegitimate child to never use the Biden last name for the child. Which, by, by the way, can you think, imagine the cruelty of that. You sire a child and, and then you say the one thing that would actually create a linkage and maybe the, the thing you've lived off of your entire life. Like, Hunter Biden has lived off his daddy's name the entire life. Like the Biden family name is the cash in the Biden family. So what is Hunter Biden's first move after he knocks up a stripper? His first move is when that baby is born, I want to strip that baby of the Biden name. So the Biden name can't be on the birth certificate. It's like an amazing, amazing thing. That was cut last week, by the way. But according to Nick Kristoff, it's all because they're just wonderful people. When Biden was vice president and trailed by Secret Service agents, he once tracked Hunter down when he was on a bender and refused to leave until his son committed to entering treatment. Biden then gave his son a tight hug and promised to return to make sure he followed through. Dad saved me, Hunter wrote in his memoir, Beautiful Things, adding, left on my own, I'm, cer I'm, not, I'm certain I would not have survived. On another occasion, the Biden family staged an intervention. Hunter stormed out of the house. Biden ran down the driveway after his son. He grabbed me, swung me around, hugged me, Hunter wrote. He held me tight in the dark and cried for the longest time. Now, all of that may very well be true, but it's also true that your way of apparently helping your son is to enable him to the tune of millions of dollars using your name. And apparently, if you believe any of Hunter Biden's text messages, I mean, there's stuff that was found on that laptop in which he openly suggests that he has been providing for the entire Biden family via these payoffs for years. That should be the takeaway for the American people. The takeaway for the American people isn't what a nice dad Joe is. That may very well be true. But the takeaway for the American people is daddy may very well be involved in a, in a serious high level corruption snafu completely of his own making, like picking up bags of cash and Hunter using his name overtly with his knowledge. All righty, folks, coming up, we're going to get into the vaunted Ben Shapiro show mailbag. So stick around for that. Become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans so you can actually access that material. Click that link in the description and join us.